Welcome to Workshop Wednesday. And yes, this is an introduction to the beginning of this video because I am currently wearing the pants that we're going to sew in this tutorial. Now, I did make the pattern last week and showed you how I did that using my body's measurements. And I literally just slipped them on right at the end of filming this and they fit 100% perfect, zero adjustments, just right straight hot off my machine. So question, how did I do that? Well, of course, I used my body's measurements. So whether you want to draft patterns or whether you just want to use commercial patterns and have more sewing success and less adjustments, you must cross-reference your pattern with your body's measurements just to ensure that the size that you've picked is actually going to uh, relate well to your body and be the size that you need it to be and find out if there's any adjustments and exactly where you need to make those adjustments. If you're ready for more sewing success and less frustration when it comes to sewing garments that actually really fit you, then reach out. Either comment on this video, find me in my Facebook group, email me, any which way, get in touch and I'd be happy to connect and share more about flat pattern measurements and how you can learn how to implement this in your sewing. Until then, enjoy this tutorial. Welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. I'm Chelsea Bussemeyer. Thanks for joining me today in my workshop. And today we're doing a sew along tutorial for the lounge pants for that pattern that we created last week. So if you watched last week's video, and I'll put the link down in the description box on this one if you didn't catch that one, we developed the pattern with my computer software. And whether you have software to do pattern drafting or design, or are just using paper, it's really the same principle. It just takes a little bit longer when you get to draw those lines by hand. And today, since I've cut out the pieces, we get to start right away with sewing. And I have obviously two of front legs and back legs. And then of course, four of my pockets. This is going to be just an easy side seam pocket that's going to be uh, added uh, right below the waistband in, in the side seam. And on the pattern that we did draft, we didn't actually draft a waistband. So since the waistband is just gonna be elastic and have just a rectangular casing, the whole width of the circumference of my waistband, casing is a stretchy fabric, so it will stretch with the elastic and it's gonna be a little bit smaller. So my waist, the actual measurement of my waist is what I'm using for that uh, length measurement and then the width of the elastic times two since I wanted to stitch the elastic in at the waist as well. That is uh, the measurements, or those are the measurements that I used for making that waistband. So I didn't really need to make a pattern. Same with the cuff at the bottom. I just have the measurement of my ankle and then the width of the cuff that I want uh, with the seam allowance times two. So I didn't bother making a pattern for either of those. I do have these uh, waistband and cuff pieces already cut out. And so this is what they look like. I have the one cuff here uh, already folded. This one is stitched. So I just have a seam on one side, my full seam allowance, they get pressed open to divide that seam allowance. So it's not as thick and then folded in half. And that's all I need to do to prep the cuff to stitch it on the bottom of the leg once we get to that portion of the garment. And then the elastic for the waistband here, I'm going to also just finish the edge so that it's a circle. Already stitch it closed. So that's what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna take this over to the machine. We're gonna stitch it closed and stitch the elastic closed. And then I'm just going to kind of cover the elastic. So fold it over and stitch it all together so that it's ready to attach once we get there as well. For stitching the elastic together, I'm just going to overlap it so that it's flatter and then just stitch it really sturdy here, back stitch quite a bit, and back stitch quite a bit. We'll just go over it twice. Make sure it's nice and secure and it's not gonna come apart. This one we just need to attach. I have here already the right sides together. So I just need to finish it off here with those seam allowance. The elastic so the waistband itself i've also just stitched down and then i can open up the seam allowance as well and fold it in half 
I'm going to line up this seam with the center back when I put it on the pants. So right now I'm just going to uh, fold this with both of these kind of junction points from the elastic at the center back. I'm just going to cover the elastic and just stitch all of these layers together so that it's easier for me to attach and I don't have to make sure that this uh, jersey here is staying uncurled and all that good stuff when I'm actually stitching it on my pants. Just feeding this elastic in so that it's nicely centered and all of my edges are aligned. This jersey keeps rolling on me. Some knits will do that when there's a cut raw edge especially when it's straight in the grain here they just like to roll like crazy okay so now we've made it all the way around and the waistband is ready to go on once we get to that step now that i have that waist and those ankle bands prepped i'm going to get started with the pockets so i'm going to take two of my pocket pieces and the front one front leg and one back leg just slid down. So let's look at this front leg here first. I'm going to take my pocket that fits right side together with this top corner of my waist. Lines up really nicely and I'm just going to stitch on the side seam down to where I made my little notch for the opening. So the opening for my pocket is going to come down to here. So I'm going to attach this piece of the pocket along the side seam from the top corner right down to my pocket opening and notch. So there we go. I've got that attached here on the front. I'm gonna attach the same style or way to the back. Where did, here's the back, my back leg. So I'm gonna take this pocket, this other pocket piece here So right side of the fabric together because this pocket after I've attached it is going to flip around and come inside and I want that right side of the fabric to be inside of my pocket. So because the waistband dips in the front because of the lower rise in the front my pocket doesn't line up the same it doesn't line up identically with this back piece because the pack back piece rises or gets a little higher the rise does for um, my bum and hips. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that at this top corner, they are exactly matching where my stitch line is. So I want them to be the same height. So I've got a little bit of extra length on the pocket there, but they're matching up right at stitch line height. Oh, my thread popped out. Sometimes it does that since this machine has the thread cutter function in it. It trims it off. It's usually when the tension is a little bit tight which isn't really the case here, but sometimes it will still just pop out. So let's get that rethreaded. Okay. It's super handy to have that thread cutter. I love it. Don't have to grab a scissor every time I finish a seam. I'm just gonna stitch right down to that notch here on the back side as well, and then do the same for the other a side of my pants. Now that I have half of a pocket attached to each leg piece of this uh, pair of pants, I'm just going to put one front and one back together. So the right side and the left side. And now that they're together, what I'm gonna do is line up that notch again below the pocket. So right where that pocket opening ends. And I'm just gonna fold the pocket out of the way, line up this notch, and I'm going to stitch from this point, that notch point, all the way down to the hem on the outside of each leg. So you want, really want to make sure that you stitch those pockets exactly to that notch point so that when you go for, to this step, you can be really exact with how you move forward. So I'm just back stitch. This corner is going to get a lot of strain on it every time I use the pocket. So just going to back stitch a couple times 
and then we'll just continue on running all the way down oh man i just love sewing flannel this is just a cotton flannel so it's super easy and nice to work with especially since i'm used to working with super slippery and thin fabrics the way this uh, flannel kind of even just sticks together don't even need to use any pins and it lines up perfectly makes me think of those old uh, flannel graphs like in Sunday school <laughs> when they had the little flannel people that stuck on the flannel board. Yeah, so there I have the full uh, straight outer leg finished off. I'm just going to bring this pocket around. And then I'm just going to go and close up this pocket right away, kind of the same style. So I'm going to attach this pocket um, to the outside leg seam with my serging stitches, but I'm actually just going to close it right from this notch as well, just making sure that the leg of the pants is out of my way. I'm going to turn around the corner here and just close this pocket up. So it should, if you're working exactly, everything should line up. So we want to make sure that at this top corner, when the pocket is closed, everything's going to line up. Well, we've got that closed too. So now I'm actually going to take this over to my serger. So let's move over there. Now that we're over here at the serger, what I'm going to do is start by going around that outer edge of the entire pocket. So I'm going to finish the edge of the pocket. It's just going to be hanging on the inside. After I finish the pocket, I'm just going to run down this area where the pocket is attached to the front of the leg right from that notch down. So I'm going to finish this off, get this underneath because I only want to catch from that notch up to the waist. Now that I have the front of that pocket attachment finished and the edge of the pocket finished, I wish I could zoom out a little bit here, but uh, just working with what we got, I'm going to serge all the way from this top corner on the back pocket side all the way down to this location where I've got my notches and I'm just going to kind of twist that pocket seam allowance in so that I can get over this transition of the opening for the pocket and just attach this bottom portion of the pocket to my side seam as I work my way down the leg, just finishing off the entire edge of this uh, side seam. So we're just going to slide this underneath here, drop the pressure foot down. here we've arrived all the way down at the hem of our pants. So now we've finished off all of the raw edges all the way around on this side seam and the pocket itself. I'm going to take it over to the ironing board now and just press this edge, uh, the edge of the pocket here on both sides, make sure it's nice and square. Sometimes you'll see this will be just stitched, top stitch to keep it nice and square, but since this is just a jammy pant, and this corner is going to blend very nicely anyways. The edge of this pocket in this seam. Uh, I'm not going to worry about top stitching it. It will be fine when I just press it. So here we go. Here's my beautifully a stitched and pressed pocket opening. So there's the lining. So I can just slide my hand into the pocket. 
and it just looks like the seam on the outside. I'm just gonna stitch through all the layers, the front leg of the pants, and then both layers of the pocket now, then it's all pressed into place, just so that it all stays put on me when I'm attaching the waistband and stays nice and square so that I don't get this edge kind of um, moved over in any way, but it's a nice square edge. Now that the pocket's inserted and the outer leg is closed, we're going to close this inseam. So I'm just gonna line up the front and back leg right here at the crotch on the inseam and close this all the way down to the hem. Now that I'm down at the hem, I'm just gonna take this back over to my serger and serge off this edge all the way along. Uh, for this particular pair of pants, it probably would have been all right to just serge it and not even a stitch it with a lock stitch. Of course, with a lock stitch and a serge edge, it is definitely a lot more secure and definitely a better quality product. And that's why I'm doing it just to make this garment really nice. And that's why I've decided to do both the lock stitch and the serge edge. Of course, you could do just a lock stitch and use a pinking shear to cut it out, or you could zigzag stitch it if you don't have a serger. You could probably even just leave the raw edge and uh, stitch it with the regular lock stitch or straight stitch here too to finish off the edges. But I have both machines, so I'm gonna do both and finish this uh, inseam as well. If you've been watching closely, you might have noticed that we've only been sewing one leg. So each step that I've showed you has only been for one leg. That's because the other leg will be exactly the same. So each individual step you'll do once for the right leg and once for the left leg. Now, when it comes to sewing a project, I always recommend doing each step for both sides, one right after the other. If you do it one right after the other, rather than sewing one whole leg and then starting from scratch and sewing the other leg, your product is going to look more similar. So the result that you get for each side is going to be, uh, or look the same. If you do one whole leg and then the other whole leg, you might get it to look pretty similar, but you'll have a larger chance that something will be a little bit different or off and you won't have that symmetry with both sides looking exactly the same. If there's more time lapse in between doing each step, then there's a larger chance that it's gonna look a little bit different. To actually sew along with this video, I would recommend doing each step, pausing the video, and then doing it to the other uh, side as well. Now that we've gotten to the crotch seam, and putting on the waistband and uh, the little cuffs at the bottom, this is going to be uh, done with both legs already attached. So we're going to take our right leg and our left leg, and I'm just gonna leave them the wrong way around and line up this crotch seam and stitch right straight through from the front to the back all the way. Now that I've attached both uh, the right and the left leg through the crotch seam and surged it off. I'm just going to add this little uh, tag here. Now this is a tag from my boutique. It's a little overkill for these lounge pants, but it's fun and hey, the color scheme matches. So I'm going to just stitch this in here before we attach the waistband. Now here I have the waistband and I've put little pins right in at each quarter to separate each corner. So I'm gonna have the seam where the waistband comes together right at the center back. And then I know exactly where the center front is and each of the side seams. I'm just gonna line this up and I'm gonna stitch it on with the machine. And then once again, go over to my serger and attach it there as well. So get it started. I'm just going to uh, pin this right on the side seam here. And then I know how much I need to stretch my flannel here as the flannel is quite a bit larger than my waistband. And my waistband is just gonna gather it up. So it's even stretchier than 
the circumference of the flannel itself, but uh, that's all right. It will be just a really comfy waistband. And the measurements of the pants are more than enough. So my hip circumference measurement with some ease. I'm just gonna attach this all the way around, stretching to size as I go. Coming around to the front now. And doing the second half of the waistband here. Just going to stuff these legs in here. They're getting in my way. We're going to turn this around a bit. Now I've divided this waistband into quarters, even though the front is a little bit smaller, uh, but in the back, I don't mind having it gathered onto the waistband a little bit tighter for two reasons. One, I don't want it to be too poofy over my tummy and make me feel like I have, you know, more there than I do. I don't need that. But two, I do have a, a very small kind of dip in the back. Uh, it is very common that I, kind of your low back is somewhat of a dip. And then I do need quite a bit of fullness uh, for kind of my hip and bum area. So having that gathered in a little bit tighter in the back and then kind of flaring right away to a fuller size uh, suits my body shape better than if I... Uh, did an even kind of amount of gathering all the way around. I might not have have the back kind of as tight as I need it and I might have just a little bit too much fullness in the front. So that's what I'm avoiding by just dividing it by quarters. So now the waistband is entirely attached and in place and I'm gonna once again pop over to my serger and finish off this raw edge nice and clean before I move on. Now that this waistband's attached, the only thing left to do is finish off the cuffs on the hem. So here we have the bottom hem and I have my cuff prep and I'm going to do it pretty much the same as I did for the waistband. The only difference here is I do actually have quite a bit more length in the leg of the pants than I do for the cuff. Because the back leg is a little bit fuller than the front, I'm not gonna divide it in quarters and uh, pin it on. I'm just gonna stretch it so that uh, this cuff is um, stretched to the point that the actual flannel itself is smooth and flat as it is stitched on. And then the cuff will just kind of pull it in and gather it in all the way around consistently. When I'm yanking on it here and just test real quick, that this cuff can indeed stretch to what I need it to stretch to. Yeah. Just got to be really careful that you do catch all three layers. So we have two layers of cuff and then one layer of the pant leg hem. Coming back around to the home stretch here. This step will once again be done for both the right and the left side. You can turn it around and see how it's looking. Yeah, right, gathered up nicely. And I'm also going to just surge off this edge as well to keep clean it up. Here they are, they're all finished. I've got both the right and the left cuff attached and uh, both of the edges uh, finished off nicely with the serger. So I don't have any frays or threads and they're ready to try on. I'm excited to slip them on and see how they fit. Oh my goodness, these pants, they fit great. I shouldn't actually be surprised since I made them myself and use my own body's measurements, but check this out. They're nice and roomy, but not too roomy. I don't like it when jammy pants are, are just too bulky and baggy, but they do have comfort. I love the pockets. It's so nice to be able to just add pockets to whatever you want. The length is great. I can uh, sit and they don't get too short. 
but they're also not too long and with the cuff they can just kind of stay off the ground and don't drag i think these pants are going to be super super comfy and i can't wait to wear them all winter well that brings us to the end of this episode of workshop wednesday always remember you need to adjust any commercial patterns to your body size or just start drafting your own patterns right to your measurements whatever and however you do it flat pattern measurements are really key to sewing success and this this project was an easy project it didn't need to be closely fitted at all it is still a great example of the results that you can get when you learn how to take your own body measurements and transfer or cross-reference that to your pattern and that is exactly what I teach in all of my programs. So definitely reach out if you're interested to know more about uh, flat pattern measurements and how you can adjust your patterns to your body measurements so you can have more fun sewing and a less frustration when it comes to fit in the garments that you create. That wraps up this episode. So see you next week on Workshop Wednesday. And don't forget to join my Facebook group if you're not already part of it. And of course, if YouTube is more your style, then definitely just subscribe and follow me here to make sure you don't miss out on any new videos that I post here. Until next week, happy sewing.